I'm trying to record a podcast. Hey, everybody. Angela Ardolino with Your Natural Dog. And my guest today is one of my very favorite holistic vets. She started her practice in 1983 and has been practicing ever since. And what I love about her is that she never stops learning and researching and finding natural products out there that can help our pets heal naturally. She's written the book on deer antler velvet. She's written the book on how vet other veterinarians, conventional veterinarians can integrate these holistic natural modalities into their practice. She is such an advocate um, for us pet parents and learning about these things. Stay tuned. You're going to learn so much. We're going to be talking about thymus, perna, colostrum, and how those items which are all natural, also interact with the endocannabinoid system and help our bodies heal and fight disease. So stay tuned. So this is Bruce. Bruce is a 12-year-old pug, and he has had a lot of issues over his life, but for the past several years, he's had a really weird hacking, coughing issue that no one has been able to get under control. Um, It's nothing infectious, it's just kind of a result of his little flat-faced breed and the respiratory issues they usually deal with. And I have finally found something that worked. It's called Breathe by MycoDog. It's a mushroom extract, and it has been incredible how quickly I saw results. Literally overnight, I saw a difference um, in the hacking and coughing, especially during the night he was doing it. So the breathe tincture has really made a huge difference for him, not only with his breathing, but just overall supporting his immune system since he has two other dogs in our household that go to daycare every day and bring home various germs and respiratory bugs themselves. And he has been totally healthy and clear of any issues since being on this tincture. So we are just super grateful that finally something is out there for these flat faced breeds to breathe better, and live a happier life. And we're back with Dr. PJ Broadfoot, one of my very favorite holistics. And I love being able to talk to you because I can be like, did you hear about this? What do you think about that? Do you think that's interacting with the endocannabinoid system? I also love that you never give up on a patient. And you realize that all dogs or or pets are different and you love to just keep on trying some alter uh, holistic and natural things that you know aren't going to cause any harm and could do only uh, the only thing they could do is actually help. Right. That's true. Yeah. It's so nice to have multiple things to be able to offer. You know, it's a it's a hard thing. You know, back when I was when most I think one of the reasons that conventional vets, a lot of them get so burned out is that they run out of options so rapidly. So it's like, you know, they don't have anything else that they can, that they know they can. Right. So it's really a, it's really a revelation to people when they actually realize there are other things out there. It's a huge paradigm shift. And sometimes it just takes one thing to get, right. the, to get that ball rolling, uh, you know, towards, uh, towards more integrative health. They don't have to give up what they know. I still use conventional medicines, just not the main part of my practice. So I know that like my favorite things are, you know, adaptogens and cannabis and mushrooms, medicinal mushrooms and adaptogenic herbs. I know that your favorite things are thymus, colostrum. Uh, what was your other one? Deer you have a algae. deer antler velvet and algae. <laughs> so I I have you on to talk about these because I feel like a lot of these natural things interact with the endocannabinoid system also. And and I remember the first time I learned this. Have you heard of shilajit? Yes, I've heard of it. So that was the first time Uh, I just... I-L-A-G-I-T-J-I-T. Right. I have some uh, files in my system. I'm I don't remember very much. I don't have to admit, I don't remember much about it, but I did I did archive some data on it. It's one of those things that sometimes it comes back up and I have to go back and review it and say, oh, yeah, I probably need to be looking at that. <laughs> I remember that was the first yeah. time I learned something other than a plant or a mushroom could be an adaptogen. And it kind of blew my mind. I was like, what the heck is this? And what <laughs> Shilajit is, so that people um, know what it is, is that it's literally the water that comes down the ice caps melt in the himalayans and they run down the mountain and all of the minerals and 
good sh- that comes from the plants and everything comes down and they literally bottle it. It's like mud and you can throw it in your <laughs> coffee or in a capsule or whatever. And it is considered an adaptogen. So that's why I knew, uh, I bet that this thymus and this colostrum, well, I already know colostrum has, you know, the original endocannabinoids in, in it. So I know why that's so valuable. So let's talk about these. Let's start with colostrum, for instance. Um, because I remember also learning for the first time that how a puppy or a baby could be born with an endocannabinoid deficiency because they weren't breastfed. And I, I know that from the cannabinoids being and the, the endocannabinoids being in the breast milk, but what else is in that first milk from, you know, the mother that helps us and our, and our animals? There's, uh, neurotropic factors so there's there's factors in it for growth because obviously that's what you know you think of of the rate at the speed at, at which is it like a microgreen yeah well like a microgreen it could be <laughs> um it, it it they have actually showed that it reduced leaky uh, leaky mucous membranes I actually did the studies in kidneys for in kidney wow. factors, so you know it helps with leaky gut it has bone derived uh, neurotropic factors or precursors for them um, there are uh, bone factors for building. There are brain uh, factors. There, that b- actually BDNF is a brain-derived neurotropic factor. Um, the thing that I think is fascinating is that every stud- every species they that I studied preferentially puts a lot of zinc in the in the first milk, and they never talk about about uh, colostrum being a, a a thymus inducer, but it is. You have to have you have to have zinc for the thymus to work. If you if you're deficient for about two weeks in zinc, you you can uh, actually um, involute thymus will shrink if you don't. Wow! Have zinc. And are you saying that zinc is in that first milk? Zinc is in that preferentially put in every species that I studied. Preferentially put zinc into the first milk into the colostrum. So wow. it, it's a it it's just an amazing. It's an and you know if the, if you look at transfer factors come out of there and you know, a lot of things that we that we um, uh, that we will extract from them and sell them as a separate thing. But I'm kind of I'm a I'm a whole foods foodie. Uh, I too. I, you know, Holy plant. I, exactly. The first thing I ever used that that really shifted my my thinking was perna. You know, the green lit mussel, the shellfish, and so it's, it's a full plate. It's got uh, minerals and fatty acids. There's 53 fatty acids in the in the perna. Which you know, wow, they were fifty three fatty acids, but um, but it's a it's a full plate, and colostrum is very much the same way. It, it's it's an all sustaining nutrient, you know, to start to jumpstart the body. So the factors and, that are in it are incredible. And you said it's really good for the thymus. Tell us mm-hmm. what the thymus is and what it's responsible for. So the thymus it is the and they is the is the uh, it's the linchpin of the immune system. And in babies, it's huge. You know, it's, it's big. Uh, if it's if it is missing, there is virtually no immune system. So wow. uh, it's and so it is it is responsible. It determines helps the body determine what is self and what is not self. So you think about that. You know, what everything that occurs in life is dependent on on recognition factors of what is self and what is non self. So if your if your system decides that your pancreas cells are non-self, then the the immune system will attack the pancreas. So and just an interesting aside on that because I don't know anything else that does that. But uh, Dr. Ushijima, who developed the the thymus extract that we use, um, had there was two kids, one of which was his grandson, with newly diagnosed type one diabetes that went into remission. Wow, I don't know anything else. So, you know, and why do you just, think that happened? How do you? So, is this something that you would prescribe to a diabetic dog or cat? Yeah. And what and what do you think it does? Sure. Well, yeah. I think I think it's I think it is a it's a bio it's a bio we know it's a biomodulator, and which means so what? It, it so it helps balance the arms of the system. So they have shown that yeah you know, it balances Th one Th two uh, CD four CD eight you know just whatever. It's it's one of those things that's a homeostatic enabler, so it brings things back to center. So it's a big balancing agent. It ramps down inflammation, 
um, that it, it, you know, for such a small amino acid protein sequence, there it's actually a peptide. The 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 ones that are extracted are actually peptides, and there's a huge thing now on peptides. You know, that's it's everywhere. All these different peptides. So uh, bone derived neurotrophic factor, I think, is, is actually considered a peptide. So you know, so people are extracting these and using them. But you know, it's primary. The thymus is primarily thought to be a, an immune factor, but it it does so many other things. When you really go down that rabbit hole, it controls a lot of things like in, the inflammation because they, they're all they're they're all converging things. So you know, you balance it like the cannabinoid cannabinoid system. You know that there's a really cool video of a uh, of uh, the cannabinoid system, like looking at it like a mobile. And, uh -huh. you know, you unbalance one of them, and so everything else goes off. Yep. So you sometimes can just put one key thing back in there, and everything else just, you know, starts balancing and, and working in concert with one another. So there's a lot of factors that really work nicely, that synergize well together. Um, colostrum being, uh, thymus being another one, you know, it's one of the reasons that Penta is, is built the way it is. There's five, there are five synergistic, uh, they're all regeneratives and they can be given orally kind of like the cbd so you know you, if you can give the body a full spectrum of things to work with it can pick and choose what it needs that's and that's why i like them better than i like taking one factor out and giving it that may be the one factor you need but if you're missing you know you, you can only build until you have all the factors that you need to put in place look at the the krebs cycle and how many things fit into that cycle if you're missing one thing you can put all kinds of other things back into it, but you can only run that cycle for to to the point where you to that one missing part, that one missing point. So you know, if you put whole foods in, you the body has way more things to choose from. I I feel like um, we are dealing with deficiencies constantly, oh, and yes. and when you are dealing with deficiencies, throwing um, maybe a synthetic drug addict at it that doesn't necessarily help it especially when we're trying to modulate the immune system um which is literally what deficiency and toxicities are probably the two major things that we deal with you know we're just looking at we have poisoned the poison the food and the water and the air and 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 so a, a drug only does i don't know of any drugs that don't do any, that do anything besides symptomatic a symptomatic fix and they sometimes create in fact they usually create more things that we didn't have prior to that so right because if we're if we're filled with toxins and our kidneys and liver are busy getting the synthetic uh toxins out or the synthetic ingredients out of their body they're not doing what they're supposed to which is no. detoxifying us correct exactly yeah yeah so there's this organs of detoxification and and that and that the body uses as routes of excretion, but we gum those things up so rapidly that they they don't and then then they don't have a lot of almost everything that you think of comes down to some kind of a mitochondrial deficiency of some sort. So you know mitochondria run the run the energy. So if you look at just the liver cells, there are two thousand to twenty five hundred mitochondria in every liver cell. I don't know who sat around and counted those, but. Um, <laughs> But it, you know, you, that just goes to show you how much work the liver has to do. You know, and once you've run down the the engines of the mitochondria, they just simply can't. They don't have the the energetic supply to to do the work that they're intended to do. So you know, a lot of things go through the kidneys. A lot of things go through the liver. Most things go through the liver. And if that if that liver is is gummed up, you know, you're you're in trouble because the body just has to up those toxins somewhere else so i love how you keep saying the words regenerative because i remember well i remember i'm still dealing with it all my senior dogs turning into geriatric dogs and watching things just deteriorate in front of me and going okay what can i do to help them and realizing how few things actually regenerate things so I loved, of course, learning about um, lion's mane and how it mm -hmm. regenerates the telomeres, it regenerates the neurons, and 
blown away how literally you can't find anything else. And I'm like, we literally have nothing for these old dogs. Now we do. And what I love is that, you know, all of these natural things are a natural way to supplement and help the dogs heal naturally instead of something that's synthetic that is not going to help them and make things worse. And so that's exactly. that's what's so fascinating about these things. So you're saying you have a thymus deficiency and it's not doing what it's supposed to. You literally can feed it colostrum and thymus, right? Yes. Yes. And where do you get the thymus nothing. from? Well, the thymus is mostly comes from cattle just because it's a, it's a readily available resource. Right. Um, but when I was, I was lecturing in Leon, Mexico several years ago and, and I lectured on thymus extracts and a, a veterinarian came up to me afterwards and was telling me that she had, had been working with a zoo and they had, I think it was, it was a big cat, I think, with a non-healing wound and they gave it crocodile thymus. <laughs> so thymus is thymus. The peptides, by the time you get down to the small pe peptides, they're, they're, their basic ingredients in, in, you know, all species probably that have, but that, that big cat healed up on court. Now, I, <laughs> uh, that is hilarious. And is, I wonder if he had any, um, different, um, behaviors now that he had part. <laughs> God, I, I, I don't know if you could tell on a big cat, but, uh, yeah. And then, you know, I was, uh, was in Chicago lecturing a few years ago and, um, there was, a. uh, a naturopath that taught at the at the big the big um, the school up there. And you know, there's a China, mm -hmm. there's a Chinese medicine natural medicine school there. And her mom had had I think an autoimmune condition, and she was getting rabbit thymus. I don't know where they got that. I have looked, and I have not seen any anywhere. Um, but the cattle thymus is by far the most um, most readily available attainable. So are humans getting results and relief from using an animal thymus? Yes. Yes. Actually, um, on my website, which I can't take credit for because I do not do tech stuff. My staff does that. Um, <laughs> Ashley does all that stuff. But there are, we finally uploaded the videos. I did about uh, seven hours of um, interview. I don't know how you guys do the interviews all the time with Dr. Ushijima. And uh, he's an incredible fellow. In fact, he's in his early 90s, just come back from Japan, um, where he walked like miles and miles and miles every day and uh, but he developed that that uh thymus extract uh in response to what was called weak calf syndrome and uh, they, when they opened him up then they did autopsies on the no thymus. that's what got started all of that with all of that but it was human doctors that did you know this this lion's uh, work of of just trying stuff and i you know it, it, Back, it must have been, the FDA must not have been as difficult to deal with back then because they were using it off, I meant off-label on, they they used it topically. Which uh, you know what? Were. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you for a minute. The reason that the FDA was probably like that is because they weren't controlled by Big Pharma yet. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. And they were like, oh, yeah, look, this stuff really works. Let's uh, yeah, look was, into this. <laughs> they they used it as, a, uh, as an updraft, you know, breathing it in. They had oh, cool. a dozen people with end-stage emphysema that um, that got no less than 100% improvement in lung function. The average was 300% improvement in lung function by nebulizing it. Uh, and then they, you know, like told you the, the two kids. That's another thing I have because of you, a nebulizer that I don't know how to use. <laughs> One day you're coming to my house and I make you show me. I, how to tried. I tried last time I was there. <laughs> Next Didn't time, I swear. Okay. You're not you're not coming to global, right? No, okay. no I wasn't planning. No. On it, but I I feel like we're gonna find eventually that uh, thymus is part of the endocannabinoid system. I just feel like we are like it's the brains behind it, or I don't know what. I mean, I know we have receptors. I I'm gonna go down that that rabbit hole because I love discovering these things. I feel like every day I'm learning something else, yeah. and they're discovering. You know, the the doctor that found the the researcher that found and named THC C B D in the endocannabinoid system, Dr. McCollum, is literally saying these all of these other activations in our bodies that are a lot like what cannabis does are part of the endocannabinoid system. So the future research is gonna be 
this is actually part, this is actually part, this is actually part. Because these things that have been known to modulate and do all of these things will end mm-hmm. up being part. So I'm excited about that because it makes sense to me. And I will tell you that the the in the in the groups of they had like thirty seven cancers, thirty some. And don't quote me, I'm terrible on numbers. Um, the they had thirty some cancers that went into remission, different kinds of cancers. They used different adjuvants with them. One of the adjuvants was actually um, something that come, like um, comes out of mushrooms. So uh, stop BCG because that's the P- that's... PSK and PSP. No, oh. no, it's it is escaping me at the moment. But okay, so we're, the... we're going to take a commercial break because when we come okay. back. I'm going to break it. Let's talk about mushrooms. Let's talk about how these, how, what does colostrum, thymus, and mushrooms all have in common? What the heck are glycans and how are they react the same? So I love that you brought that up. So when we come back, we'll talk about that. This is Blanche, and she's the most noodle-ish dog you've ever met in your entire life. She's just the most loved dog you've ever met. But if you leave her alone, it becomes a total opposite thing. Blanche has severe separation anxiety to the point where she will scratch doors down to the wood, bark all night, cry if you leave her for five minutes. Um, I tried the collars, I tried the sprays, I tried thunder blankets. The only thing that's ever worked was CBD, and that's why I got started in this business. Our comp tincture is 550 milligrams of full spectrum CBD and lavender. It's the perfect remedy for separation anxiety, anxiety, stress, or fear. I love my dog. And I hated knowing that she was home freaking out. So I wanted to find an all natural way to do it. No doggy Prozac, all natural. And once I found CBD, there's no other option. CBD dog health, healing naturally. All right, we are back with Dr. PJ Broadfoot on Your Natural Dog. And we're talking about these other natural things that we can find in our world that feeds our endocannabinoid system, helps our immune system. Um, A lot of times what I love about uh, Dr. PJ is that she won't stop until she finds something that works. And there's always, every pet is is an individual and completely different. So you can't just say this is going to work every time. So I do the same type of thing, combining mushrooms and herbs and cannabis until I get a result that I need or want. And then when I can't find it, I usually text uh, PJ and go, all right, what else should I throw at him? Um, so it's almost like you are uh, taking these other natural substances, you know, and using them to their benefit. And of course, now everybody is interested in medicinal mushrooms and what they're, what they can do. And you're literally proving and saying that colostrum, thymus, um, perna are kind of doing the same type of things and are a lot have a lot of the same activation as mushrooms do, right? Yes. Yes. Like I've even heard you, I've even heard heard you even say that they have glycans, and I'm like, wait a minute, aren't those polysaccharides? Isn't that what's in mushroom? So explain that to me. Well, glycans are are kind of the substance that makes up the the mesenchyme. They're, so they're the framework on which everything else is built. So there's proteoglycans, there's glycosaminoglycans, which are sugar. And if you look at things like diabetes, um, the, that happens in the in the mesenchyme or the matrix long before you ever see increases that are that are sustained in the blood, because it's a sponge. Meaning you can catch it before it turns into diabetes. Yes, I I, be, I truly believe you can because that what happens is that framework of glycans is is catching sugar. So they call that uh, adenosylization end, end products or gly or ages, and the that 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 is going on long before you ever you know once you get so much candy in that system when that tissue becomes rigid, then you can't push sugar through the insulin can't push the sugar through that space anymore. So you know you're so you're pre diabetic long before you're frankly diabetic, and we're measuring the blood. We're not measuring the matrix or the mesenchyme, which is which is glycans, which means sugar. Glyco is sugar. So, you know, you'll stack those sugars out there. So the first time I ever, you know, I had read a study on alpha lipoic acid and uh, lymphomyosin, which is the complex homeopathic, and, and that was supposed to help with diabetic neuropathy, which is an end-stage issue because you 
gummed up that mesenchyme so much that the, the nerves were actually being compressed. So the first drug I ever put on it was on lots of insulin and and just didn't feel good. It didn't feel good at all. So we put him on the, the uh, lymphomyosin alpha lipoic acid and much to my dismay, um, his blood sugars went up instead of down and I was going, but you know, he was clearing the coffee table and he was running and he was playing. So obviously his cells were happy. Well, years, several years later, I was listening to a lecture by one of the home talks people and from Germany and, and, and she made the comment that, that the matrix is gummed up with sugar. That sugar, if it, if it, if the cells can't take it, it has to come back into the bloodstream to be peed out. So, you know, you're looking at, and we don't, we, we're not looking at the matrix space. We're not looking at the framework, uh, the glycans or the, you know, all those things like the uh, collagen and that's the internet of the body. I mean, that's where the, well, that's where the, that's where the information, it's the information stream. It's like an internet. Uh, it's also where somewhere in there is also where the acupuncture meridians were. So that, you know, it's a huge information space. So, you know, there's was some really interesting studies that I that I put in the in the deer antler book, the little deer antler book that um, there was a, a researcher named Preeti that was uh, using collagen. Um, I'm pretty sure it was collagen in end stage cancer patients, you know, failed conventional therapy and they had remissions of a lot of a lot of those patients. And my thought is that if you restore the internet, if you restore the cell-to-cell -cell communication, if you restore the um, the pH, the electrical potential, cancer cells are have got the wrong electric electrical signal. So the body sees that. The only two things that the body tolerates are a fetus and, that are not self, are a fetus and cancer. And part of that is because they both have a different charge on the on the cells like the placenta and the, they're coated in a different, um, in a different charge. And that charge to the, the body tolerates that charge. That electricity component to that. There's an oxygenation component to that, which sets those up. Uh, so the pH is the, and it's, you know, so the cancer is acidic. It, it's acidic. It likes acid, it makes acid. So there's all of these factors that we, that, you know, you need to look at all of those kind of in concert when you're trying to deal with, uh, with a, a cancer patient. So, and there's some really interesting things, you know, that about stress and cortisol levels, and that's where a lot of those um, modifiers, those those uh, endocrine balancers, can come in. Uh, in that it 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 downregulates the stress factors, the cortisol. Those, you know, you think about people who, you know, they lost lose a spouse, and six months later they've got cancer. Now it's probably already there, um, but the stressors. You know, unbalanced. They're 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 much more unbalancing than we than we think about. So those can all be big factors. So you know, you do things that you know. They, the book laughter is the best medicine. You know, there's some truth to that, right? And it elevates your, uh, your endocannabinoid system. It elevates your uh, the those those hormones that um, that improve mood and, and sense of well being. That's that's not just that's not just um, mood. Francis, <laughs> yeah, it's it's that's it's real body stuff. It is very real. Yeah, I think it's so. All of that is so interesting. But what's so hard is like I understand it for myself. But how do we practice that with our pets? You know, and I think okay, let's take them outside. Let's let them run around and be themselves and mm -hmm. smell and sniff and lay in the sunshine and do all of the things that these animals are supposed to do is probably what's going to keep them. All of those are big factors. You think about just the, the, the issue of grounding or earthing, which is there's a, there, the earth has an inherent uh, frequency and we're isolated from it because we're wearing rubber cold shoes. And uh, so we're not, we're not in tune. We're not getting that electron flow that comes from the ground up through and balances stuff. Uh, yep. Actually, it's like a shower. A lot of times people feel better after a shower. Well, that's you're bathing yourself in electrons that have come through the earth. They're coming through pipes, but they're still coming through the earth. So, oh, I know that are... like native peoples literally buried them in the ground to heal, you know, if someone was yes. sick kind of thing. Or put them in and a sled I... lodge 
and erase the yep. temperature. Yep. I mean, I, I, um, my small farm, I, I make sure I go barefoot, which sounds gross, but I, uh, I go do all my farming. <laughs> That's <laughs> when great. I do, do my animals every day, I try to go, okay, don't forget to uh, go barefoot so you can at least have to spend that small time. Was it roof stout? Was it roof stout? That was the, uh, she was a gardener that she gardened naked. I thought that's the right person, but she gardened naked. She was known for that. So she got I would, vitamin D and... Awesome. Right. I would do that, but my neighbors would watch. I knew yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. that's probably so, right. I know that a lot of people are probably listening, and I feel I want them to understand that degeneration is something that we all go through with old age, and that we all have cancer cells in us, and that cancer is... Uh, a part of degeneration. However, we can do something about it. Yes. What What are like your top things that you turn to when you get a dog, you know, that is experiencing cancer? Well, you know, we there's there's that there was a little bit of a of a controversy at one point in time about the deer antler because it actually has a degf, which is a a, a a growth, uh, a protein a growth. That, that incre- increases uh, blood vessels. It's one of those and I remember vessels. us talking about this back when uh, Nina was first diagnosed with osteosarcoma. Yeah. Well, and I gave actually... her deer antler velvet every single day. So, yes. Yes. Talk, let's well, talk about it. And interestingly enough, they've, I just put a, I just archived a, a study not too long ago where the balance of that is actually, um, you know, small amounts of the BEGF is actually uh, is actually anti-cancer. So uh, I'll have to send you remind me to try and send you that study. It's been a couple of weeks ago since I read it. But you know, I that that everybody was worried about. Oh, you don't want more blood supplies in in cancer dogs. But if you look at the collagen, and they actually did studies in in like uh, I think it was mice where they where they did chemo, and the animals actually did better, lived longer with the uh, with the deer ant, it improved their sense of well-being and their longevity. So, uh, as far as like just reducing the the risks of cancer, if you knew uh, the the things that have telomerase um, per, uh, inhibitors, so you you stop the the destruction of the telomeres and you make the DNA uh, replicate more correctly, you have less cancer. So there's a number of there's a number of those. In fact, I did a whole I did a whole lecture on on those. But those are also longevity factors because they the DNA doesn't turn over as rapidly, so they get more uh, reproduction of those of those of that DNA before they age out. So you know there's the I think ashwagandha and there's so many of those that are that are useful. The deer antlers one, the thymus is one. Astragalus root, I know, is another one. Yes, actually, yes, it is. And uh, and interestingly enough, cranberry is also oh. a, tel- a telomere. <laughs> it's a telomere lengthener. So I, yeah, that was a that was not one I expected to run across. But that's why it actually ended up. I've got a wellness formula that we that's not being made commercially. We're just making it in house. But that's the reason that cranberry's in there. You know, we put it it's in, great. I just put cranberry in one of my treats that are going to come out. So. I shall so, yay. So well, that, that's but, that's thanks to Doctor Bassent, but um, yes, that's I'm that's, very glad. It's a great. It's a you know you there's so much more data. You know you just don't realize how many antioxidants it has in it, and uh, it, it's one of the best. It's one of the best antioxidants. Uh, but it definitely they've done some studies on telomeres and cranberry. So you know I always we used it for bladder stuff forever. So it's right. a biofilm buster. So, like, if if, you, if it stays in the mouth for a while, it can help break down biofilm. You know, cancer creates a biofilm. That's the that's the the charge that um, it you know it has a different charge on it. It repels chemical T cells. So it's like its cloak. It's like its yes, little cloak exactly. to hide from everything. Exactly. So the re- one of the reasons I was so comfortable with, of course, I'm comfortable with anything you suggest because I trust you tremendously. Is that you know even though you told me that about deer antler velvet and taught me. I knew that I was also giving Nina both THC, a full cannabis extract, and a full hemp extract, which I already know that THC is going to cut off that blood supply to the cancer. It's going to kill it. 
and that, yep. you know, CBD what turns our cells into natural killer cells, which goes out and finds those rogue cells and kills them. So I knew that even if it did do that, that I was helping her in one way, but I was also making sure that the bad stuff wasn't going to be, the bad part of it wasn't going to take over. But yes. nobody can argue with me. I watched it stay in her wrist, and you were the one that told me, don't amputate. That's not the first thing you need to do. And I want to thank you tremendously for that because when I finally did amputate is when I lost her four months later, um, which just, just to bring that up, I want people to understand. Um, I don't think people understand what a dog, an old geriatric sick dog with cancer goes through when you put them under and remove a leg. Just tell us a little bit about that, because I feel like I want people to know that we have choices. Not only do we have choices inside the holistic realm, we have choices, period. So um, and my choices, what I was told, you know, cut the leg off, chemo and therapy and uh, radiation, which I did none of those things. And you got much longer uh, life out of Nina than you than than what they um, will normally give you. So, right. The first, you know, the dog that got me started on homotox was was a uh, was an osteosarcoma dog with a tumor this big. Uh, it was huge, yeah. just absolutely huge, and they didn't want to take the leg off. It was a middle aged Irish Wolfhound. You know, taking the leg off of her would have been really hard on her. Um, they didn't want to do chemo. They didn't want to do radiation. And I was on the hunt, and I I even called Brzezinski in Houston about anti neoplastons, but it you know, would just would work on 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 a dog with an osteosar. So uh, I had had the orange book and I pulled it off the shelf and looked at it. You know, I called them and I and they happened to have a, a medical doctor on staff and said, I've got an osteosar, what have you got? And he sent me, I don't know, half a dozen things, which my mother ended up taking as a matter of fact, and she is now almost 95. She had breast cancer um, and never did chemo. Awesome. But anyway, we started that dog on those, and the tumor actually shrunk because we we actually measured it, and it it physically shrunk with over time. Was it on the wrist? You know, it was yes, and she was running. Wow, I can't even imagine that because all I saw hers. I, I told I was told that any other dog every time I took her any any of the vets, they would just be like, "How long has she had this? Okay, well it should be this big." And it's only this big. So I never got to see it go down, shrink. but I yeah. I never got to see it shrink. That would have blown my mind because it's so hard. I know. That, but I don't, that, I was surprised too. And then she was running and playing and compressed the bone and we put her down. I mean, running oh. and playing. Right. No, I know. That was great. Now, if I, had, if I had known then what I know now, I might have recommended at that point in time to go ahead and take the leg off because... Yeah, there was the one thing that I have seen is that there has not been apparent um, met- metastatic stuff to the lungs, which is what gets a lot of those dogs. Right. Um, we had one, the, the uh, I think the first cancer dog we treated with the thymus extract had a big mass on a front leg, and she was, you know, middle aged. Oh, she was older. I mean, she wasn't middle aged. She was an older, big German Shepherd. Um, and they came for alternative therapy, and we did thymus extract injections, and we sent her home with they they gave thymus injections themselves, and and the, the mass got a little bit bigger, but the dog was doing great. I mean, she was chasing the horses, and um, and, but she started pooling fluid below the tumor. So yeah, that's said, what well, Nina, happened to Nina. I said, well, and we we kept that at bay for a little while. And then I said, you know, get her X-ray. She doesn't have signs of metastatic disease. Yeah, her quality of life is great. Otherwise, I need to take the leg off. So I sent her back to the veterinarian who had seen her initially, and she had no signs of metastatic disease, which is very unusual on yep. osteosarcs. Same with Nina. They, they took the leg off of her. And you know, my dog lived another year, year and a half. They moved wow. uh, They moved to Pennsylvania. There was like 20 veterinarians at the time with thymus extract, and they moved into her practice, into her area. Uh, Judith Shoemaker had thymus uh-huh. extract. So uh-huh. um, it was, and they put her down for other reasons, not, not because the cancer, her, her hind end finally gave up on her, but she was a white, big white German Shepherd, which was a risk factor for her anyway, no matter what. Right, right, right. 
So, uh, so anyway, th basically that's, uh, that would be a suggestion is if we're going, if they're going to get the leg amputated, what are we going to do to support their immune system and body after yeah. that amputation? Because explain to what happens to the body when, you know, like, let's say your dog's is, uh, immune system and body is busy fighting off cancer from spreading and taking over. Mm -hmm. And then you put them under yeah. and you amputate, then the, isn't the immune system now concentrating yes, on that, that was your that was and that was the question that i got off on a tangent which i did you know? oh no that's okay but now uh, i'm so saying and we give a thymus now under afterwards and this is something that would be supportive meaning that, 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 that i think i would really awesome. i would yes because you want the immune system where the problem is that there's this thing called seed and soil where primary tumors all you know very often have already put nests which uh, John Beard, the the embryologist, called trophoblasts, and they they roundly discounted everything he said. They they basically thought he was a nutcase. Um, now we know they're they're phytoblasts. So there there are cells, there are nests of cells that the body has kind of put out, you know, in distant places, um, you know, because you so you hear somebody that oh they took a tumor out and six months later it was everywhere. It was already. Everywhere. When right. you put an animal or a person under anesthesia, you actually put the immune system to sleep. You take the immune system offline. Um, and then the sometimes the primary tumor is keeping a dampening effect on tumors that are other places. Uh, you know, like it send must send out a signal or something, but it keeps the it keeps the tumors kind of at bay in other places. When you take the primary tumor off, you've taken away that signal, that dampening signal. And all the others go haywire. So there's two things with anesthesia that I think can be, uh, an is with anesthesia removal, that could be a problem. So it makes me, you know, it makes me kind of nervous when you, when people want to take everything off that comes up. Sometimes I'm not sure that that's the best, um, the best option for them. And oftentimes because... they don't get it all. So they make it even worse where they're not removing the entire tumor. And so, so now they kind of like angered it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and you've gotten all that, you know, you've gotten more blood supply coming in to heal that wound. And there's, uh, I, I'll tell you kind of something that so sounds a little uh, crazy, but uh, that's us. Um, but and it's based on Dr. Becker's work, the body electric. They found that when you, if you had a salamander and you induced a tumor, it, you know, like in a leg, if you cut through or below the tumor, so the tumor's still there. There's tumor tissue still there. When that, when that tissue regenerated, when the leg regenerated, the cancer went away, and that's called the current of injury. Isn't that interesting? Uh, it's called the current of injury. So that current runs down through there. It changes the electrical, wow. and changes the electrical potential of those cells, and it turns them back to regular to normal cells. So if I can get a, a tumor somewhere that I that I can control the bleeding on I try not to close it because when you close that if you close the gap you close the current of injury it's you you stop the electric the the current of injury that's why I so it's almost like the the body it's signaling the body yes to go there go to that spot and and fix it and then in, yeah. and while they're going they're like oh hey cancer what are you doing here let's get rid of you yeah Yep. Awesome. Yep. That doesn't sound crazy. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the it's in the book The Body Electric by by Robert Becker. He was brilliant and did uh, the yeoman's work on the on regeneration theories. So he wrote a they wrote a couple of books. He wrote a couple of books. But that one that one kind of changed the way. So if I take a tumor off of the toe, um, I leave it open. If the owner will let me leave it open, you know, people want it closed, but if they'll let me leave it open, I'm leaving it open. If I can control the bleeding with Gunon Bio or pressure wrapping or whatever, I'm going to leave it open just on the premise that as that current of injury runs down through there, it might catch any rogue cells that we might have missed and re-specialize re -specialize those cells. Fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah, it's just I stuff. love you. I love you. <laughs> I love talking to you. I learned so much from you. Um, you have books and information and everything. Where do people find you? Um, and are you doing, do you do online consultations or? I do when I can work awesome. them in. We do quests, okay. which is a bioenergetic screening. And oh my gosh, they take a lot of time. 
Um, but that 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 allows us some um, to actually put numerical values to uh, to the therapies that we use. It actually gives us therapies, and then we go back and look at what we know, and we check therapies, and it it'll assign whether it's causal chain, which means get get to the root of things, uh, whether it's a maintenance so that helps with symptoms, or whether it's just disresonant. And there's a lot of things that people that are giving that are, you know, they just don't, they don't match up on that dog at all, at least not at this point in time. It doesn't mean that they won't at some point in time. So, um, and we do on, you know, we're actually dealing with a dog in New Zealand right now that I think may have heard me on one of your podcasts. I'm not entirely certain. Awesome. Uh, and we got somebody from Egypt and it's so, a really interesting it's a really interesting thing. I one in Canada, so we've got three. In- it, it actually drives me crazy because I can't. They're they are so excited. They hear the podcast. They want to purchase or get it. They can't find it wherever they are. We can't send it to them. It's the most aggravating thing ever. It breaks no. my heart. I used to like you know basically put non labeled products and send them to people to help, but we can't. I mean, we can't do that, and it's yeah. awful. So those people that are listening that are in a country or even a state that is, um, you know, not letting these natural things be used or found or even um, obtained, you need to become an advocate and you need to scream and yell and you need to get involved so that you can have access to it. That's what I did in my own state. I didn't do it alone, but I did it in my own state. And I work with veterinarians. I'm happy to work with veterinarians other places. You know, it's not a competition. For me, so if you know, if I can, and if I can help them learn something else, I am all for that. We, I, we just had a call from a fella in Belgium, and I found him a, a veterinarian in Belgium because Karen Becker just happened to interview her like in the last couple of weeks. So I found it, and I, I found a heel a heel subsidiary for him in Belgium as well. So it, the shipping is off trying to get oh awful because it takes yeah. forever, and they just will take it. They don't recognize it. So expensive. Yeah, sometimes it's a fight. You know, it depends on who you get. You know, they get to customs. It depends on who you get. I know. the time they'll go through every once in a while. It's like, what's this? Same thing I sent last time. Right. So, all right. So, how do get? How do people find you and get in touch with you? Uh, we have a Facebook page. I do not monitor it. Ashley does. Um, we have a website. It's drpjb.com. If they're interested in the thymus stuff. There's, like I said, there's like seven, well, it's cut down, but there's hours and hours and hours of interviews there. Cut down into sound bites. They're like 10 or 15 minutes. So you don't have to awesome. for seven hours of, of interview and they are labeled. So there's autoimmune, there's cancer, there's, uh, I think there may have been the lung stuff. Uh, there's anti-inflammatory, you know, thymus has an anti-shock kind of an activity. It's really interesting stuff. It is. It is. I love it. Way I, I love it. So. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing everything that you learn with us because um, I feel like there's a lot of pet parents who don't aren't finding relief or things that work for them. And I say go try as many of these natural things as possible with the guidance of someone like you or a holistic veterinarian so that you can see it help. might actually yeah. help. And it's tremendous. And we get to see it at, on a daily basis with people who are finally trying at least a full spectrum hemp extract or a true mushroom extract and seeing their dog come back to life. Yeah, I'm really excited good. about that. I'm really excited about the mushrooms. Um, yeah. We're just starting to, starting to I, we have used mushrooms for several years, but we're just starting to use yours. So they look like good. really, really good formulas. So I'm, Thank you. Thank you. I worked really hard and it was again, went out into the marketplace to try to find something and couldn't find it. And found a myco alchemist and teamed up with him and two years later we've created i've used them on my dogs and have seen tremendous um results so i'm glad this is just another thing that feeds our endocannabinoid system and helps our immune system function um at its optimal and i just want to say they're just big balancers i love i love the idea that if you give the body the right tools uh it can take care of the bulk of problems by itself that's right. Thank you, PJ. Appreciate you so much. All right. Have a good Thanks. day.